Today we're talking about the final keyword in Swift. We're gonna talk about the two main benefits. One is preventing inheritance, and two is the performance gains. We'll, we'll dive into that a little bit later. Before we talk about blocking inheritance, let me give a quick 10 second overview on what inheritance is. And a great example here is a custom uh, button that I've created, uh, a GF button. Uh, it looks like this, as you can see, you, know, you can set the background color, it's got a nice bold font, rounded edges, that's the custom button. So what it does here is you can see it inherits from UI button. So what that means is my GF button gets all the bells and whistles that UI button has that Apple built. However, I can just kind of put my nice little coat of paint, my little extra features on that button. I can build on top of UI button and I can build on top of it because I'm inheriting all the stuff from UI button. Okay, so that's inheritance in a nutshell. So what the final keyword does is it blocks inheritance. Let me show you. So I have my GF button here. If I scroll down, let's say I wanted to create a class, a GF button junior, <laughs> we're inheriting uh, from this. Now, so this would inherit from GF uh, button. Cool, and then I could do my, my class stuff down there. This is fine, I'm allowed to, because I haven't marked uh, GF button as final. But now if I mark it as final, now you're gonna see, and I, I build here, you see I'm gonna get an error down here. Build failed, why did it fail? Uh, inheritance from a class G, uh, final class GF button. So again, I've blocked the inheritance past GF button. I said, you cannot inherit from this class. Now you may be wondering like, why would I wanna do that? Well, let's say you're building like, like an SDK or a framework, something that other developers are gonna import into their code base to use. Let's take Stripe, for example. Stripe is a very common SDK to allow you to you know, take credit card payments and accept payments and all that, just keeping it real simple. Well, if you're Stripe, you've built this whole you know, SDK. You don't want developers coming in, overriding your classes and putting their own behavior on it, right? You built everything to work together the way you intended. Um, not only can they do their own customizations, but it could potentially be abused. So as an SDK developer, like you don't want that, right? So you wanna mark your classes and stuff uh, as final, and that prevents that inheritance. Uh, building on this before we move on to the performance gains. So right now you see I have my class as final. Well, let's say I don't wanna block the entire class from being inherited. However, there are certain behaviors on this class that I don't want users of my SDK or framework or API, I don't want them to override that specific function. Because when you subclass, like right now, because I got rid of final, my GF button junior is fine. Let's take this example, oh, spoiler alert, you're, I forgot to delete this from my little practice run. Little, little behind the scenes right there. Spoiler alert, you can set individual functions uh, as final. So I deleted that final, uh, so now you can see I can override and then set uh, background color, and I can put in my own behaviors, right? I'm overriding this function. However, if I put the final in there, again, I spoiled it, and do a command B, you're gonna see I get the error that says instance method override, uh, overrides a final instance method. So I can't override it. So uh, again, to sum that up, you can either put final in front of the entire class, and that can't be inherited, or if you just wanna block off you know, specific methods, you can put final in front of that function signature, uh, and that will block that from being overridden. All right, so let's delete GF button junior uh, since we are, are done messing with that. And let's talk about the performance gains of using final. I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a compiler engineer. I don't really know much about this stuff. So let's go to the documentation real quick and I'll show you here. Increasing performance by reducing dynamic dispatch. So dynamic dispatch and static dispatch is the key here. And, and this paragraph really sums it up nicely. Um, so. Uh, like other languages, Swift allows a class to override methods and properties uh, declared in its superclasses. That's what we just talked about. Um, this means that the program has to determine at runtime which method or property is being referred to. So that basically says like, well, if this method can be overridden, uh, me, the, at runtime, I gotta figure out which method we're using. Are we using the original or are we using the overridden one? So that adds some like performance overhead um, and that's called dynamic dispatch. So there's trade-offs, right? Dynamic dispatch increases the language expressivity. So it means like you're more flexible with the language, right? You can override functions. However, it comes at a cost of like the, the runtime overhead. So if you use final, as you see down here, and private's another thing with like access control, it's another topic, I do have videos on that if you wanna search the channel, but by making a class final or a function final, you make it static dispatch, which basically means like, hey, this is final, this is the one we're using, right? With dynamic dispatch, the compiler has to like figure out which one we're using. By marking something final, like that's it, you're kind of making that decision for them, again, performance gains is, is the moral of the story. And again, the bigger your app is, the more gains you're going to see.
So that's the final keyword in Swift. Uh, so if you like my teaching style, you like what I'm doing here, you like how I present things, I started creating my own courses. You can check out the website here. You can watch like the first 10% of each course for free just to see if you'll, you'll like it or not. But anyway, we'll see you in the next video.